Good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to the ninth day of our Ignatian online retreat. Let your light shine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, our Father, the past few days we have spent looking at our own lives. We have spent it reading the story of our own lives. We have been looking at how you have been there in our life and at times where we have not responded to you. Lord, as we look at our lives, we have become aware that there are certain areas of our life that require healing. There are certain ways of thinking, behaving, certain attitudes of ours that require change, certain attitudes that require conversion. And today, Lord, as we place ourselves before you, we ask for that healing. We ask that we may genuinely feel your forgiveness. Give us also the grace, O Lord, to forgive others who perhaps may have hurt us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, the past eight days have been tough days, challenging days for us. We have experienced God's love for us. With the strength of that experience, we have gone to look at our lives. We first want to see what is the purpose of our lives. What does God want us to do? Having looked at that purpose, we began to see where we were. What were the things that were blocking us? We saw that in the light of our core grace, that is God's love, we were struggling because we were operating from what is known as our core sin or our core weakness. Instead of operating from our true selves, we were operating from our false selves. My dear friends, very importantly, in that first few days, we talked about Ignatius's principle and foundation. Where Ignatius reminded us that everything on this earth has been created for us to fulfill our purpose. We also realized our mistake. Where we saw that at times, instead of loving God, we had fallen in love with God's creatures. We began pouring, probing, and looking where, you know, where does everything come from? My dear friends, when we fall sick, when we get a fever, what do we do? We may go to a doctor. The doctor will certainly ask us a number of questions. Because I may have fever, because I may have a disease, I may be having malaria. I may be having typhoid. I may be, it may be just because I have been infected by the COVID virus. A fever be, could be because of another infection. There could be a wound which has caused that infection. I could be having a sore throat which causes fever. I could also have fever perhaps if I have gone for a dental treatment. That also causes fever. Now, when I go to the doctor, I need to tell the doctor everything. I don't tell the doctor, doctor, give me fever. Give me something for fever. The doctor, if I tell the doctor I have only fever, the doctor may give a grossing or a dodo and tell me, work at it. But after some time, I will realize because the underlying infection or the underlying disease remains, that fever tablet is of no use. I need to first treat that disease. I need to treat the origin of the problem. 
and that's what in one way we have been doing the past few days we have been looking at the origin of our problems because very often when we go for confession we only talk about perhaps the symptoms of the disease we are not treating the disease which lies at the root so these past few days have been that journey to arrive at the root of the disease we want to purge what is blocking us from the very roots so the process my dear friends has been tough now having seen this process we are now aware of where we are at this particular moment in our life now what can still hinder us what can still hinder us is an attitude which says i don't have a problem nothing is wrong with me i am good i am perfect as i am i am like that only but if friends if we have that kind of attitude there cannot be any real conversion we will have god you know trying to tell us something good it will you know hit us on our head we will understand it from here but since our heart has not really changed we will not be responding to god one more important thing that could block us is an understanding of shame an understanding of guilt these are not the same thing these are two different things what is helpful for conversion is having a healthy understanding of guilt shame doesn't help us let me give you an example now suppose i go i push somebody while i am walking and that person's phone falls down and breaks what do i say i will say sorry sorry my friend um i didn't want to push you but by mistake i happened to push you and this has happened i made a mistake now i made a mistake is no a realization it is a healthy guilt now if i am going through shame having looked at that incident what i will end up saying is not i made a mistake i will end up saying is i am the mistake a person who ends up believing something like this i am the mistake doesn't ever change because here is a person who perhaps god wants to forgive but this person is unable to forgive himself or herself this person is not a loving god or not a loving oneself to experience that god has forgiven himself or herself such a person will perhaps be scrupulous and come again and every second day come for a confession but without going through a whole conversion process the whole conversion process requires realizing i have made a mistake acknowledging i have made a mistake and also importantly to be able to say i am going to try now not to make that mistake in the future now just like the example i gave you i by mistake i pushed somebody that person's phone has fallen down and has broken i also now do to need to do something to repair that damage because i can simply go and hurt somebody and pass by and say i am sorry that doesn't cause healing that is not reconciliation what god is calling us what jesus calls us time and again is for reconciliation reconciliation now requires that i do something i may have to compensate that person for that today my dear friends important also to look at what is forgiveness what is reconciliation 
Now, if I have fought with my friend and my friend has hurt me, if I am speaking about forgiveness, it means I have to forgive my friend. My friend need not forgive me. I am choosing to forgive that person. I am hurt by this. I need to understand my hurt, feel that hurt, get rid of my anger, get rid of that hurt feeling, forgive. God's grace will be required for this, but possible. I am making the choice to forgive. The other person need not forgive me. Now, when we speak about the reconciliation, it's about, I have hurt my friend, my friend has hurt me, or only my friend has hurt me. It is not only about saying, I forgive him. It's about both of us coming together and telling each other, I forgive you. Reconciliation requires two people. And Jesus always invites us to reconciliation. Sometimes not easy. But that is the challenge before us. My dear friends, today is a day where we spend some time quietly in prayer. Quietly in prayer, looking at our lives. We know what we have done the past few days. Some things have emerged. Some new, some deeper understanding about ourselves have emerged. Now, that is what we are now presenting to God. Lord, this is who I am. I have made these mistakes. I am genuinely sorry about this. Lord, in future, I don't want to do this again. Lord, with your grace, with your help, I will not do this again. Lord, if I have done something also like this, I want to rectify my mistake. Today, as you sit for prayer, look at this very carefully. I present two scripture passages for you. The first passage, the very famous scripture passage, the story of the prodigal son. All of you know this story. Look closely at this story. Remember, the Lord forgave. The father forgave that son even before he asked for forgiveness. That's our story also. God forgives us. But it's good for us to ask for this forgiveness because in that sense, I take ownership for that. Remember, my dear friends, whenever we say the I confess, we say, through my fault, through my fault, through my previous fault. Each time I'm doing something like this, it is a reminder that I acknowledge I have done this. I take ownership for my actions. I am not blaming somebody else. I am taking ownership. Today, that ownership is very, very important. If I continue to say the, I confess, I will see, I am now asking Mother Mary. I am asking the saints. I am asking everybody else to help me change and not make these mistakes again. That's the invitation for us. Stay with the story of this prodigal son. Place yourself before the Lord. Experience the Lord telling you, you are forgiven. You are my son. You are my daughter. The Lord wants you. Will you take that courage now to go to the Lord? Nothing you do is too much for the Lord. The Lord is there to forgive you. Only go. Go. Take. Make that effort and go. Another beautiful passage which you could pray with today is Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. It's the story of Zacchaeus. 
Look at the way Jesus deals with Zacchaeus. Jesus is perhaps on the way to Jerusalem. Imagine how important this man Zacchaeus was for him. Anybody else, none of our political leaders, they try to be very politically correct. Sometimes people want to be very religiously correct. But look at the risk that Jesus takes by going to that particular village. Look at the risk that Jesus takes by calling Zacchaeus from there. Imagine what that crowd would have said. They know who Zacchaeus is. But here, Jesus makes an effort to go all out to speak to him. Once Jesus meets Zacchaeus also, very importantly, Jesus doesn't tell Zacchaeus, after you change, I will come to your house for dinner. Jesus only tells Zacchaeus, I am coming to your house. Zacchaeus now begins to feel that sense of value. Zacchaeus begins to experience the love, the consideration this person has for him. That is what changes Zacchaeus. The experience of love. And today we are being invited to have that same experience of Zacchaeus. The beautiful, the unconditional forgiveness of God. I want to experience that. This is something which all of us need to pray for. So we know, we know, all of us know when we can definitely say God's love is unconditional and all that. But have we felt it? That is the challenge before us. Because if we have felt it, there is no room for that shame which debilitates us. There is no room for that kind of guilt which again incapacitates us. There is that deep desire to be with the Lord. It is a, a realization that this is me. I have done this. I have made this mistake. But the Lord is there. I want to be with the Lord. I want to change. That comes from within. One more important area, my dear friends, which we end up struggling with is the area of forgiveness. Forgiveness, we have heard statements. Forgive and forget. My dear friends, none of us have Alzheimer's. We won't forget. But what is important for us to know is if we have genuinely forgiven, the hurt, the pain associated with that event goes away. I need to deal with that hurt. I need to deal with that anger. I need to deal with that pain first. If that happens, forgiveness happens. Have you seen two children fighting? They fight. Once they have fought, they may, whatever, they may do something. If the parents don't intervene, after some time, those two, two children are back. They don't remember the hurt. They don't remember the pain. They deal with it. It's over. And if you ask them, is there something to forgive? Oh, nothing, 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 nothing to forgive. That's one. Let us deal with that hurt. Deal with that pain. Now, the danger, my dear friends, is we don't want to surrender that pain. The danger is we don't want to let go of that hurt. We want to hold on to that. You know, there is a famous Indian story of this thing of catching monkeys. What is the story? The story the, the hunters basically realize that they cannot actually throw a net and catch a monkey because there is a danger of hurting the monkey. Monkeys could also run away fast. Then they realize there is a simple technique. They would either take one small pot or, or make a hole in a tree trunk. The hole is enough 
small enough for the monkey to put its hand inside. Inside that hole, they would keep some good nuts or good rice or something like that, which has an aroma. The monkey comes for that nuts, comes for that rice, smells it and puts its hand inside. As soon as the monkey has put its hand inside, the hunter would come. Now, the monkey has got that nut or that few grains of rice over there and its fist inside. Now, that fist prevents it from drawing its hand out of that hole. And the monkey is caught in that hole only because it is not willing to release its fist. It sees the hunter. It knows it has to go, but it holds on. Something like that happens to us. We have Jesus telling us time and again, forgive, love one another. But here we are, we are holding on to our hurts. We are holding on to our pain. We don't want to let go. If you are going through something like this, my dear friends, important in a way to ask yourself, what am I gaining by holding on? Because if you are holding on, it means you are gaining something. Sometimes what we want is sympathy from others. I can tell my sob story in number of ways. That person, he did this to me, they did that to me, here I am, here I am, so poor, good. But now, now what? That person has continued with his or her life. You are the one holding on to the pain and suffering. Do you want to let go? That's the question for you. That's the question for each one of us. So today, my dear friends, grapple with this. Grapple with your own issues, which have you have discovered during these days. Stay with the Lord. Experience the Lord's forgiveness. Ask the Lord to bless you also with the grace to forgive others. Don't hold on. What I invite you is today, Bring this person who has hurt you, whom you are struggling with, bring that person before Jesus. Look at Jesus. Tell Jesus, Jesus, here I am experiencing that hurt, that pain. Jesus, help me let go. Bring Jesus, my dear friends. My dear friends, there is also a method of St. Ignatius of Loyola. It is known as the Triple Colloquy. The first and foremost, what is the Colloquy? A Colloquy is a conversation between two people. Two people who speak freely with each other. I can speak freely with Jesus. I can listen to Jesus speaking freely to me. Colloquy. The Triple Colloquy is a method. Now, if I desire something, I genuinely desire to change. And I know I'm going to be struggling with this issue. I'm struggling to forgive, perhaps. What St. Ignatius of Loyola proposes is, first, go to Mother Mary. Place before her this deep desire of yours. Pour, it, pour out everything to her. Speak to her. When you have spoken to her, when you have placed this desire before her, and you feel satisfied, now say the Hail Mary. Now, perhaps holding Mother Mary's hand, you slowly go to Jesus. You're there before Jesus, or telling Jesus, look, I got mommy, I got your mommy with me. I have already told her all this. Jesus, this is what I truly desire. Again, open your heart to Jesus. Once you have done that, say the Anima Christi, the soul of Christ. Once you have finished speaking to Mother Mary and Jesus, take both of them now and go to God the Father. Telling God the Father, look, I have brought your son, I have brought Mother Mary also. I have come with both of them and this is my desire. Once again, have a colloquy with God the Father. 
pour out your deepest desire to go at the farm. Once you have done that, once you feel satisfied, say the Rafa. Today, my dear friends, I wish you all the best as you pray using these points. May you experience God's forgiveness. May you experience the joy of being forgiven. May God also give you the grace to forgive people who have hurt you. May you genuinely feel that you have forgiven others. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without an end. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.